What's up, everybody? This is your boy, Uber Hikari, a.k.a. The Nerd Nigga, here to bring you another video with no frills, just the analysis. All right, so it's time for that Shaman King Zero review, baby. Here to bring you another chapter review of Shaman King Zero, this one about Ren, called Tears of the Ren. Uh, just a quick note. Um, although the chapter, if you if you go on man Manga Stream, which is where I got the chapter from, uh, they'll tell you that the name of the chapter is Tears of the Wren, but that's probably a mistranslation. Um, I'm almost 100% sure that's a mistranslation. The title should probably be uh, Wren's Tears. Um, it's something technical about Japanese that you know only somebody who's a nerd like me would know. Uh, but I did study Japanese for two years, although I was, you know at a kindergarten level by the time <laughs> that whole thing ended. But still, the title is probably um, Ren's Tears, and it makes sense given the content of the, the chapter. Um, also, man, I've been waiting a hell of a long time, man. The last time one of these chapters came out was, you know, I think December 30th of last year. So, man, I've been, I've been waiting a hell of a long time. So, and uh, very quickly, let me just talk about this whole, you know, manga stream viz thing. Uh, to be quite frank, I don't give a fuck. You know, uh, manga streams clearly doing something illegal. Viz holds, you know, the rights to that. Personally, I don't give a fuck. Um, you know, you can get, you know, One Piece, Naruto, and Bleach chapters practically anywhere else on the web. And you know, you know, my Shaman King has been delayed long enough. So you know, if you know they get rid of, you know, Naruto, One Piece, and Bleach, and you know that leaves time for you know them to translate my Shaman King chapters, then so be it. All right, so let's get right into this this Shaman King Zero review uh, about Ren. Uh, so it's going to be broken into three parts. First is the artwork. I'm going to touch a little bit on that. Then I'm going to give you the summary, and then at the end, I'll give you my analysis of the chapter. All right, so the artwork again. I, I know I, I might have mentioned this the last time I did a a, a review on Yo. Um, on the chapter about Yo, but the artwork looks very very sleek. Um, the cover page has you know you know, Ren, and, um, you know, it's Ren, and he just looks, you know, very, very sleek. It's a, it's a nice combination of, you know, simplicity, but also, you know, great detail. And, you know, the outfit that Ren is wearing is, you know, a very simple outfit. Um, his hair doesn't have a lot of, you know, definition to it, but you can clearly see, like, you know, the creases in his clothes, and it looks like he's wrapped in, in barbed wire, and, you know, the spikes are, are really detailed, so I really like that about Takei's work, that it's a, you know, a combination of, um, you know, great detail in some places, but also very simple, so that there's, you know, not a lot of lines distracting uh, your eyes as you're trying to, you know, look over the, the artwork, and so it looks very sleek, very aesthetically pleasing. Uh, very aesthetically pleasing, and uh, you know, this is just a personal preference for me. I don't really like my artwork with a lot of lines, and um, I think you should have detail where you know it's necessary for for the you know the artwork to be aesthetically pleasing. But you know, I don't really like a lot of you know great you know flamboyant detail. So I like my artwork simple but not minimalist. Simple but not minimalist. So uh, now let me get into, you know, the summary. So the chapter begins as a frame story that sort of segues into Ren's story. Um, if for those of you who don't know, a frame story is simply, you know, a story within a story. So uh, an example of a frame story would be a flashback because that tells, you know, somebody's story, but it's within the larger context of the narrative that's that's ongoing in the present moment. So it's, you know, a sort of, you know, flashback of Tao Ching that, that serves as a frame story that, that's going to segue later into, you know, Ren's story in the present, the present in which the chapter takes place. Um, and the frame story is really used as, you know, a sort of device to connect Ren and Shimane Joe, which is, you know, a character that we saw in the last Shaman King Zero uh, chapter. And there's some deeper symbolism about why that, you know, happens, why that, you know, frame story, you know, is used as a as a literary device here. But I'll get to that later on in my, you know, analysis portion of this, you know, chapter review. And so the the backstory that we get, like I said, is of Chao Ching, and it basically chronicles. Uh, well, for those of you who don't remember or you know who don't know, Tao Ching is, I believe, Rin's grandfather, and he's the forty second head of the Tao family, which is the the family that Rin belongs to. Um, 
I'm not going to go, you know, too much into detail, but, you know, basically, you know, Tao is, you know, Ren's grandfather, and he's, you know, later on in the chapter is shown that he was the one who trained him for the, for the Shaman King tournament. Um, so the, the backstory is basically of Tao Ching, and it, it chronicles his exploits during World War II. And the, the chapter starts off with a, a little bit of comedy, um, and, you know, that's always good to have some, some comic relief, because this chapter was, you know, pretty pretty dark um but it starts off with a little comedy shimane joe is on board a warship and like i said you know we remember shimane joe as a character from uh the last sean mckay zero chapter and you know he's talking about how he wants to you know he's on a warship and you know he he doesn't have a gun he has a guitar and you know he's talking about how his music is going to bring people together and you know He's like, you know, when I went, when I get to America, everything's going to be great because my music is going to bring us all together. And uh, it's it's really funny because the soldiers on the warship are, you know, muttering to themselves. They're like, you know, what the hell's wrong with this guy? He needs to exchange that guitar for a gun. And then not only that, um, uh, we find out that he's actually not going to America, but he's going to China. And this is funny to me for some, you know, nerdy reasons. Obviously, it's it's pretty funny given the fact that in World War II, America and Japan were on opposing sides. So the fact that Joe thought he was on a Japanese warship heading to America is, you know, pretty funny to me. That's, that's just pretty funny. And that's, you know, just the geek in me, I guess. Um... And then we get to see how Shimane Joe died after that, unfortunately. So, you know, we get a little bit of, you know, comedy at the, the beginning of the chapter, but it really doesn't last long. Um, Tao Ching shows up, and um, and this is the part that, you know, connects to, to his story and that will later connect to Ren's story um, later on in the chapter. Uh, he commands a, a corpse infantry. And I, if I remember correctly from the original Shaman King, this was, was the power that Ren's sister all, also had. And I forget the, the, the karate dude uh, that his sister was able to control as a sort of zombie. And, you know, Tao Ching, you know, was involved in the war. And basically, you know, his power was to control what he called a, a corpse infantry, basically a zombie infantry. And he turns the Japanese regiment, you know, of which Shimane Joe is apart into, you know, zombies. And we really get to see um, some of Tao Ching's personality because he says something, I can't quite remember, but he said something like, I, I'd rather hear the, the sound of, of breaking bones and snapping necks than music. And it's, we get to see that, you know, he's really a sadist, um, that he's probably a misanthropist. Um, misanthropist is a person who, you know, has a hatred for, you know, the human species or a disgust for, you know, the human species or, you know, some sort of contempt for human nature. And uh, this is, you know, part of the reason why he thinks this, if you remember from Shaman King, is that, you know, the Tao family was, you know, ostracized and I isolated because of, you know, their shaman powers. You know, the fact that they could, you know, bring, you know, people back to life as zombies. And so this is part of the reason why they lost faith in humanity. But, you know, we really get to see the way Tao Ching is, is warped by this by this experience and you know the Tao family in general you know how it's how it's warped by this this whole ideology of misanthropy and so after you know he turns Shimane Joe and the Japanese regiment into a corpse infantry there's you know sort of a time skip um, that takes us into the present. Well, maybe not into the present, because this is a sort of prequel to Shaman King. But it takes us, you know, right to the point where Ren is just completing his training uh, so that he can go participate in the Shaman King fight. Uh, and so, you know, Tao Ching is, you know, training him. And, and here's this, you know, another element of, you know, Tao Ching's sadism. For a birthday present, he gives... Um, Ren, uh, Shimane Joe as, as a present. His, and Shimane Joe is a zombie who's been kept alive for, you know, something like 40 or 50 years. And so he gives Shimane Joe to Ren as a birthday present along with, you know, 999 other zombies that he created from his time, uh, during World War II. And, you know, basically, uh, you know, He's presented them to Ren as a test. And uh, as Tao Ching says, you know, you have to destroy them along with your petty, along with the petty emotions that they represent. 
And so Ren has to prove that he no longer has any sort of emotions and that he, he no longer has any sort of attachment to, you know, humanity and even to his own humanity. And so Ren does a spirit fusion with uh, Basson and uh, he cuts them, all of them, 1,000 of them in one stroke, you know, just cuts them all in half. And uh, that's pretty, pretty sick. The, the spirit fusion, of course, looks cool as hell, but damn, you know, to cut a thousand zombies, I mean, that's pretty sick. Uh, so now let me just get to my, you know, analysis portion of, of uh, this chapter review to sort of, you know, see what's going on here. And honestly, uh, and I know I said this in the last chapter review, but Hir Hiroyuki Takei has not lost a step. And I know these are sort of, you know, you know, self-contained chapters and, you know, they're not part of a larger story. Um, but still, the writing is just absolutely superb. I mean, the amount of stuff that he can pack in to these chapters is just, is, is mind-boggling. Um, and, and only, you know, 17, 18, 19 pages is just, it, 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 it's really something special to see. Um, you know, a, a writer of this sort of, you know, excellence and to see how he's, you know, continued to hone his skill after, you know, all these years really is really, you know, it's exciting for me. Okay, so uh, in the last chapter, we saw how, you know, Shimane Joe was um, a very important symbol. And basically, he was, you know, the personification of music. And, you know, um, that music became a sort of symbol for, you know, people's ability to create relationships um, uh, with other people. And so one of the important quotes from the last chapter was that music has no borders and it has no sins. And so um, we get to see how music, like my music teacher used to tell me, um, music is a universal language. And basically what that means is that um, it builds bridges between um, people of, you know, various walks of life from different perspectives. And it allows us to sort of transcend our cultural differences. And it allows us to, you know, build bridges between people that we would otherwise not be able to create relationships with. And so, you know, Joe, like I said, is a personification of this, and he's a very important symbol um, in the last chapter for, you know, Yo Asakura. And it's, it's you know, one of the interesting things is that um, it, it, it's not that Rin kills these people, but that he destroys a particular symbol. Because, you know, one panel, uh, one page from the chapter, rather, um, shows that, you know, I think the first person that he cuts is um, Shimane Joe. And, you know, his body is just literally just cut in half. Like he cuts through his guitar and he just cuts through his entire body. And Shimane Joe is like, you know, basically dismembered. He's, you know, been cut in half. And so basically what happens here is that the, the deeper symbolism of this is that, you know, by, you know, cutting Shimane Joe, um, Rin isn't just, you know, killing Shimane Joe, although, you know, he's doing that, but that he's also destroying a particular symbol that was very important uh, for the last chapter. And, you know, this is something that I didn't expect. I expected the chapters to be, you know, one shots, you know, basically self-contained stories, but I didn't think that there, that, that Takei would take it to the level of writing where he's using um, motifs across chapters and he's using symbolism um, across, you know, what should be or what are, you know, self-contained chapters. And so that's that's very good writing on Takei's part. And so basically what we see here is that in one context, Shimane Joe becomes a symbol of the possibility of creating relationships that, you know, break down the differences between people. But now as a zombie, Shimane Joe becomes a symbol of how humans destroy themselves. And in particular, it's a very important symbol of how, you know, the Tao family has, you know, warped their own humanity and has sort of, you know, imposed that ideology on Ren. And, you know, we get to see some of the backstory about about, you know, precisely how it is that Ren, you know, became who he was. And in another important way, um, you know, it's because, because Shimane Joe, you know, has, you know, a, a very important um, symbolic um, 
uh, very important symbolism in one chapter, and then he has, you know, a different sort of symbolism in another chapter. This basically shows um, that Yo and Ren are somewhat foils of each other. Um, because if you remember, Yo, um, you know, connected with Shimane Joe in a very different way than we see, you know, Ren sort of, you know, connecting with Shimane Joe in this chapter. Or at least the, the context is somewhat different in. It is because of that, you know, context that we get to see how, you know, divergent Yo Asakura and um, uh, Tao Ren's personalities are. And like I said, this kind of shows that they're foils of each other. Um, a foil is a literary device whereby, you know, um, an author or, you know, basically someone who, you know, writes a narrative, um, juxtaposes, you know, two characters in order to, you know, contrast or highlight the differences in their personality. Um, and so it's a device that's generally used to establish the personality of, you know, the important characters uh, in a work of fiction. And so this shows how, you know, um, the symbolism, you know, um, um, the, the, the symbolism in one context and the symbolism in another context just shows how, you know, Yo Asakura and, you know, Ren Tao are on completely opposite um, ends of the spectrum in terms of how they, you know, um, one has hope for creating relationships with humanity and the other one has just, you know, lost all faith in humanity and is basically, you know, destroying himself in the process or destroying his own humanity in the process. And then, um, as you know, the chapter, you know, after, you know, Ren cuts up the, the um, well, as he's in the process, it's, it's very interesting because, you know, Takei also warps our sense of time because um, in the process of cutting, you know, Shimane Joe and the other uh, zombies, um, there's this weird moment where, you know, time sort of stops and Ren is engaging in this, you know, process of thinking about what he's doing and he's engaging in this process of thinking about his own humanity. And so there's a couple of pages where time just seems to, where it seems to stop while it allows for, you know, Tao Ren to engage in this sort of, you know, thinking process which is, you know, very good characterization on Takei's part. But then Takei, um, during, you know, this, this suspended, you know, time frame, uh, Takei uses um, a beautiful metaphor, or rather, you know, Tao Rin uh, uses uh, a, a, a beautiful metaphor. And it's a very uh, interesting rhetorical technique um, because of, you know, because of, you know, how, how it contrasts the zombies with Tao Rin and, you know, this is why I give this chapter a 10 out of 10 uh, for Takei's writing. Um, Rim is is killing zombies, uh, but he's the real zombie because metaphorically speaking, he's already dead. And the, the sort of metaphor that he uses um, is uh, um, that I have to live by killing my heart. And so there's this juxtaposition between the zombies on one hand and Tao Ren on the other hand. You know, zombies are supposed to be, you know, uh, a sort of symbol of, you know, the, the living dead. Literally, they're the, you know, living dead. And um, but it, here um, they don't represent, you know, death. They represent life because Shimane Joe is, even though he's a zombie, he still has a spirit and he's still alive. And actually, um, in the page where you see Tao Ren cut Shimane Joe, he actually has a, a sort of smile on his face. And, you know, that sort of symbolizes the spirit of, you know, Shimane Joe. And, um, you know, Tao Ren, when, you know, he cuts Shimane Joe, he's, you know, you know, like I said before, it's symbolic of the way that, you know, he's destroying an important symbol from a previous chapter, but it also shows the way that he's cutting down his own humanity. Um, so he's the real zombie here. He's not, you know, not the, 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 the sort of zombies that Tao Ching has created. Rin is the real zombie because in order to, he, because he has to live by killing a part of himself. And so that's a very, very, you know, good writing on Takei's part because of that juxtaposition between life and death and what it means to, to be alive and what it means to be dead and for the fact that you know you can be a, you know a zombie even if you're you know still alive you know even if you're technically alive you can still be a zombie in a sort of you know metaphorical sense 
and you you see this you know epiphany that 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 Rin has come to you know right as he's you know cutting through all of these zombies and you know like I said it's very important symbolically because it shows that you know he's cutting his own humanity that he's cutting himself down and that in the process of you know going through this you know sort of you know ideological warping that Tao Ching is imposed on him that you know he's losing his own humanity in the process and uh, it's very funny. Uh, it's very ironic, rather, I should say. Not funny, but it's ironic because, you know, after Tao Ren cuts the zombies, Tao Ching uh, says to him, uh, 99 corpses twanged with a single slash. And he's, you know, basically saying that this is something marvelous, when in reality, it's only one person who's been cut with a single slash, and that's Ren cutting himself. And Perhaps maybe even Tao Ching cutting Rin, um, because in some symbolic way, like I said before, um, or in some metaphorical way, um, by imposing this ideology on Tao Rin, uh, Tao Ching is, you know, cutting him as well. So in reality, there's only one person being cut and, you know, not a thousand zombies. All right, so... Um, Another important thing that happens in this chapter is that, you know, uh, this there's this sort of, you know, um, interesting interplay between, you know, winning and losing that happens. And so this is just, you know, another level of, you know, the the, the sort of dual aspect of life and death um, that, you know, Takei is really exploring, exploring through Tao Ren's uh, characterization. And uh, Tao Ching says, you know, um, the shaman fight is theirs, you know, because basically he's, you know, um, you know, congratulating uh, Tao Ren on, you know, you know, how he's mastered the spirit fusion technique with Basson. And Tao Ching basically says, you know, he's mastered this technique so great that, you know, there's no way that we can lose the shaman king fight. And so this language of winning and losing also becomes a metaphor um, for something deeper. Because, you know, uh, right after Tao Ching says that, Tao Ren says, um, who is the real winner? I am lost. And that's that's a very interesting phrase because, you know, you would expect Tao Ren to say, um, who is the real winner? I already lost. But he doesn't say that. He says, who is the real winner? I am lost. I am lost. And, you know, of course, this might just be translation from the Japanese to the English, but I think it's it's very important from a linguistic standpoint to not say that I have lost, but that I am lost. And so part of what we see here is that Tao Ren uh, has lost himself. He's lost his humanity, that he's lost a part of himself by, you know, engaging in this sort of, you know, ideology of, you know, cutting off all ties um, to humanity and in the process cutting off his own ties to his own humanity and so um, you know that's that's very important characterization uh, as well in this chapter um, and the chapter could have ended I mean the writing was so superb at this point that the chapter could have ended you know right after that page but it continues I think for about you know one or two more pages and uh, it's, it, I mean, this this just, you know, and this is why Takei, you know, is, you know, one of my top five or top six mangaka, um, you know, that I've come across is because he's he, he takes an idea and then he has, you know, one level, you know, with the juxtaposition of Shimane Joe as a zombie and then Tao Ren as a, as a, as a zombie um, in a metaphorical sense. And then he continues with that theme through, you know, the language of winning and losing. So, you know, there's one level, then there's another level, but then there's a third level as well because, um, there's a there's a sort of um you know after this whole you know thing transpires Tao Ren is sort of walking away and you know it's a shot of his back but then there's you know another panel underneath that picture and it's a it's a picture of children's toys and you know they're soaked in like blood there's you know blood all over these children's toys and whenever you see you know children or you know children's toys they generally are a symbol of you know childhood or innocence of humanity of you know those sorts of things but here they're soaked in blood and so um there's another aspect to this you know this whole, you know, event or situation. And that is the fact that Tao Ren is still a child. 
I mean, he's he's a child being put in a position where he has to deal with very adult um, sort of, you know, uh, concepts and that he has to engage in, in this whole sort of ideology of conflict, of, you know, hating humanity, but also how that hate sort of rebounds onto himself. And so, you know, he's experiencing this sort of self-hatred because he's, you know, alienated from his own humanity. And um, we get to see how he never really got the chance to be a child. And um, and I guess in a symbolic or metaphoric sense, um, his childhood was always soaked in blood because he was always under the command of, you know, Tao Ching. And so, uh, like I said before, you know, Hiroyuki Takei has, you know, not lost a single step in terms of his writing. And if anything, I would think that he's gotten better, that he's mastered, you know, writing to an even greater extent than he did in, you know, Shaman King. I mean, you know, three Three different perspectives, three different levels, three different aspects of, you know, how, you know, um, you know, Rin is going through this process of, you know, developing as a character. I mean, you know, to have three levels of characterization inside of only, you know, 18 or 19 pages is just spectacular writing. Um, so, you know, obviously this chapter gets uh, a sort of, it gets a 10 out of 10. And, you know, obviously I can't wait for the next one. And I hope Manga Stream gets to it, you know, because, you know, like I said, now that they've been able to drop <laughs> Naruto, uh, did they ever, I don't know if they ever translated Bleach. I I'm, I can't remember, but now that they've dropped Naruto in one piece, you know, hopefully this will give them the time they need to work on these other Shaman King Zero chapters. Um, so, yeah, excellent chapter. Uh, this was your boy Uber Hikari, a.k.a. The Nerd Nigga. Just brought you another video with no frills, just the analysis. So, uh, peace and have a blessed day.